Now let's take a look at some photos. These are, are more just examples. These aren't uh, something I'm going to be quizzing you on, um, but these are just kind of to show how different layers vary uh, from place to place. Uh, and so here we have, uh, all these are courtesy of Dr. Timothy Brothers, so uh, much props to him uh, for loaning these to me. Uh, but uh, in this image here from uh, Massachusetts, uh, the soil signified by the uh, uh, the red and the brown colors, those would be the, what we would refer to as the true soil, uh, has developed in glacial till uh, since the most recent ice age. Uh, and the red uh, tones that you kind of see there uh, are probably from iron uh, oxides, uh, uh, and so you have uh, uh, some some chemical weathering going on there, which is causing uh, those those irons to oxidize and turn that uh, reddish color. Uh, the dark uh, colors at the top. Uh, would be more of that hummus, that finely decayed uh, or ma organic material. And down at the bottom uh, is that unweathered parent material uh, that you can see there in that black box. The soil of cold, wet climates commonly have a thick organic horizon, uh, which decomposes very slowly in the cold climates uh, and the slightly acidic conditions created by the coniferous trees. And so beneath this, you can see this grayish uh, layer. Uh, and it's a grayish layer of quartz sand uh, that's been stripped of a lot of its uh, uh, certain types of minerals. Uh, and farther down you see uh, certain uh, you know, layers of clays, uh, but then you see the sandy soils, uh, the very high sand uh, content uh, down below. And like we've said before, pine trees, they really like the sandier soils. Uh, and so this is uh, uh, typical uh, of what we would find in the boreal forests uh, of, of Canada. And Dominican Republic, located in the Caribbean, uh, gets a ton of precipitation. Uh, and so here you get a high amount of leaching. Uh, and so this is one more reason why, uh, why, why agriculturally uh, the tropics aren't, aren't that great. Uh, and so they're not too sustainable uh, because of the heavy amount of leaching. The nutrients don't stay uh, for too long there at the top layer. Uh, below, you see this tilted sedimentary rock, which is tilted. Uh, due to plate tectonics, and so plate tectonics have tilted uh, that sedimentary rock, that uh, uh, rock that uh, uh, developed these distinct layers, and since those layers developed, uh, uplift has occurred, causing this uh, slope. Warm, wet, tropical climates are commonly deep, uh, but very infertile, because so much of the water removes uh, many of the plant's nutrients. Uh, it's also very rich in a lot of the secondary minerals, such as clays and oxides, uh, and those oxides then uh, in this case, this, um, uh, this is basaltic or igneous rock, uh, which, of course, this is uh, uh, from Hawaii. And, uh, Hawaii is uh, based off of igneous rock, uh, volcanic rock that's, uh, uh, that's cooled and hardened. Uh, and that, uh, that, uh, that uh, rock contains a good amount of iron, and that iron then interacts with oxygen and gets oxidized or rusts uh, and turns into this certain color. Uh, and so that what's, that's what creates this very, very red uh, tone. Another country that uh, has a good amount of uh, volcanic eruptions in its, uh, uh, its geologic history is New Zealand. Uh, and so New Zealand uh, has, this, uh, in this case, this volcanic rock uh, that we see here in this, this white box. Uh, it's uh, uh, pumice uh, is the porous volcanic rock that uh, we see here. Uh, agriculturally, this is actually quite productive. Uh, and so this volcanic rock is actually pretty darn good for... Uh, uh, for, for vegetation, it grows pretty uh, lush, uh, lush uh, forests and uh, grassland areas as well. This showcases soil development in uh, arid regions or dry regions, uh, which is limited uh, by lack of water. Uh, so the vegetation cover and organic matter are often very sparse, uh, chemical weathering very slow, and the downward movement of weathering and decaying products uh, is very limited. And so the soil horizons uh, are very very hard to tell. They're not too distinct. Uh, and the entire profile isn't too deep at all, uh, as we can see here. Uh, and so this is from the Snake River Plain in southern Utah. Uh, and so what we see here is the effect of vegetation is uh, quite evident on the photo on the, uh, on the left. Uh, the soil on the right is developed under a grassland uh, in which the roots have, have helped to diffuse and to, you know, add a little bit of organic material uh, deeper down. Uh, but you can see how it's, you know, there's not much uh, of a soil profile here uh, in these dry, arid areas. With New Jersey being closer to the coast, uh, of course, it's going to have a higher sand content in the soils. And so what we see here is a s distinct layer of uh, these distinct soil horizons that have developed on top of an old sand dune. And so, of course, that sand dune 
and this layer is going to have a diff distinct uh, effect on uh, the ve vegetation above. 